Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. So what did I learn 10 years ago, which is about 50 years ago? In 2010, 29, I'm kidding around here. In 2009 and 2010, I was doing a lot of trading, six-figure trading in double leverage silver plays, AGQ, HZU in Canada. Uh, if you don't know what that is, a double leverage silver, um, silver play is basically... Um, it's a leverage play. So if silver goes up 5%, you buy this ETF, AGQ, uh, it will go up 10%. Now the problem with these double levered uh, ETFs is that they have a bleed effect. They're meant for very short term trading. You're in and out a few days, a week maybe, and that's it. Because what happens as it's going up and down, up and down, it's bleeding, um, it's bleeding value and it could lose huge amounts of value over time. So you don't want to buy and hold this. If you want to buy and hold something, you stick to uh, non-leverage ETFs like SLV. So the reason I mentioned SLV and silver is because now the Wall Street Bets guys are jumping in on this, and uh, you saw some major moves today in silver. You saw it go up. At one point, it was up almost 10%. And that was unlevered. That was SLV. AGQ was up like 20%, 22%, depending on the time. So I was looking at this this morning because this was up quite a bit pre-market. And uh, eh, a good friend of mine took a position in that, meaning he bought some SLVs. And I was like, I don't know. We'll see. So I went into the, um, the Reddit forum and people were, there's some debate going on on there with regards to whether they should take a position or not. Some people say, I don't I haven't looked at it too deeply. Anyway, I did not take a position at this point. It may, I may lose out. I may lose out. But so far, it's been bleeding down again. So we have to see. Uh, you have to understand when you're looking at uh, these forums, uh, whether it be Reddit or in, back in the day, it was Yahoo Finance for, forums. You can see short-term moves at... Uh, go up and down based on the crowd. It's very hard to to predict what the crowd will actually end up doing in, this, in the end. I don't know. Now with uh, GameStop, you saw that they were able to push it super high because of the massive short interest, uh, especially, you know, went up beyond, you know, the float, 100, it was like, I think 130% short. That's a ripe target. I did that type of play uh, a decade or so ago with Blockbuster where I took a position and uh, one of the reasons I took the position, because I saw a huge short interest. I figured it's got to cover at some point. It's got to cover. And eventually it did cover and the, the stocks spiked up. Of course, because I was so concentrated in that position, two days before the big spike, after holding for months, waiting for the short squeeze, I decided to get out because uh, I read the 10Q. The company was about to go, it was about to go, excuse me. So I missed out on that play because it was too heavily leveraged. So the lesson to take away from this is that when you're involved in um, uh, when you're involved in these markets, it's very time consuming. It's very time consuming. Um, you have to be ready to move in and out. A lot of people lose money trading. Some people make a, a buckets load, but it's a very dangerous game. So I always recommend if you're just looking at this now, you're new to this whole game, paper trade for a few weeks. What that is, is you get a spreadsheet, you choose, you, you give yourself, let's say, uh, 50000 or 100000 in pretend money, and you buy stocks or trade or funds at a particular point in time. So you might go uh, GameStop, SLV, and you set the date, how many shares you bought, what the price was, and then you just pretend you're actually tracking real money trades. And you do like a one-day one price point, a five-day price point, maybe a 10-day price point. And then you see what happens. Do this for a week or a week and a half and see what happens. See what happens with your trade. It's going to give you insight into yourself. It's going to give you insight into the market. And it might be very illuminating. Again, most people who make money in the market are doing it through um, ETF, uh, ETF broad market funds. Uh, again, I'm not giving you investment advice because I'm not a financial advisor. Um, and I can't do that because I don't know your situation. It's legally, I couldn't do it anyway. You have to research your, for yourself. But as far as I know, the people who make money in the market most of the time, consistently, it's kind of boring, is they buy uh, index funds, 
ETS like you know, Vanguard is the lowest fees out there, like the S&P 500 or biotech stocks. So this way you don't have to pick and trade and do all this kind of thing. You just monthly or quarterly, you throw in money in there and you just forget about it. And inevitably, history shows us that it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. So there you go. There's another strategy. It's called the barbell strategy where you can put most of your investment into like these middle of the road, safe ETFs. Um, a chunk of commodities, a chunk of S&P, chunk of biotech, you know. So you don't have to pick companies because, you know, are you a biotech expert? Are you a commodities expert? I don't know. If you are, maybe you can pick and choose the winners in those in that industry. But if you're not, how do you know which company is going to do well? You know, there are a lot of e-commerce companies uh, that existed when Amazon existed, but uh, most of them went bankrupt. But Amazon survived, right? So keep that in mind. So yeah, you could, uh, that's the barbell strategy is put most of your money in one of these, uh, these broad market ETFs so you don't have to think about things. It takes a lot of stress off your back. And then you take, let's say 10% of your money and you barbell, you, you go with some, some really highly speculative plays. Like imagine if you would have bought uh, GameStop when it was 20 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks or maybe, I don't know, whatever else, a sundial, a sundial you buy at whatever, at 50 cents, etc. So this way, you, you, you know, you lose on one, you may lose on the other, but at least most of your money is in these broad markets, so you'll be safe that way. Like I say, you know, if generally speaking, I'd rather put a 100 grand in an ETF that goes up at 7% a year, 8% a year, then take 10 grand and, and, and be in and out, in and out, in and out trading and taking up all my time when I could be doing my business. Anyway, just some food for thought. Uh, yeah, welcome to, I'm just starting up this channel once again. If you like the channel, subscribe, etc. blah, blah, blah. There's going to be a lot more on this, not just finance and investing, a lot of entrepreneur stuff. I've been an entrepreneur for three decades, so I think I can uh, teach some people a few things. Thanks for watching. Bye.